Did you know that the key to unlocking your true potential lies not in what you do, but in how you think and respond to the world around you? If you want to master yourself and live a life of purpose, you need to do this one thing, embrace the timeless wisdom of Stoicism. In today's world, we're constantly bombarded by distractions, expectations and pressures that keep us from being our best selves. But what if I told you that there's a way to cut through all that noise and reclaim control of your life? Imagine a life where you are calm in the storm, confident in your decisions and unshaken by the chaos around you. This isn't some far-fetched dream. It's the result of living by Stoic principles, a philosophy that's helped some of history's greatest minds rise above adversity and unlock their highest potential. In the next few minutes, I'm going to share with you some of the most powerful tools you can use to transform your mindset and take control of your life. But be warned, this isn't a quick fix. The journey of self-mastery takes time, patience and dedication. So if you're ready to challenge yourself and step into your true power, keep watching because what you're about to discover could change everything. Number one, value your time. Life often feels like a rush. We're constantly juggling tasks, from career ambitions to family obligations, trying to strike a balance between responsibilities and personal desires. At times, it feels like time is slipping through our fingers, doesn't it? But what if I told you that one of the most powerful and timeless strategies you could adopt is something that's incredibly simple yet often overlooked. That's right, valuing your time. Picture this, you're sitting back, relaxed, perhaps enjoying a peaceful evening or spending time with a loved one. You're content, feeling a sense of accomplishment and fulfillment. In these moments, time feels abundant, doesn't it? But as soon as the hustle of life kicks in again, it feels like there's never enough. Now, imagine what would happen if you began to see every moment as precious, if you started treating time like the limited resource it is. This is where the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius comes into play. The Roman emperor, who lived in one of the most demanding times in history, understood the fleeting nature of life. His meditations are filled with reflections on how we should never waste the time we've been given. He said, you could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think. Just think about that for a second. If today were your last day, would you spend it on things that truly matter to you? Would you be proud of how you used your time? When we truly grasp the value of our time, everything changes. The way we approach work, relationships, and even leisure becomes more intentional. Imagine for a moment, what would your life look like if you made the conscious decision to only engage in activities that align with your values, passions and goals. No more time wasted on distractions. No more saying yes to things that drain your energy without adding value. This isn't just about productivity. It's about living a life that's truly aligned with your deepest desires. And there's something nostalgic about that, isn't there? Think back to a time when you didn't feel the weight of obligations, when life felt simpler and your time was yours to spend. Maybe it was during childhood, before responsibilities piled up, when you could focus on what made you happy without the pressure of doing all the time. Time seemed to slow down back then, didn't it? But as we grow older, we tend to let time control us rather than the other way around. The truth is, time will always slip away. It's inevitable, but what we can control is how we choose to spend it. Are we spending it mindlessly scrolling through social media? Are we letting toxic relationships drain us? Or are we carving out time for the things that truly matter? Our passions, our growth and the people we love. Marcus Aurelius's timeless wisdom reminds us to treat every moment as precious, not because it will last forever, but because it doesn't. As you reflect on this, think about the things you truly want to accomplish. 
What's on your bucket list? What are you waiting for? If you knew your time was running out, would you keep putting off those dreams? The reality is that you don't have an endless supply of time. That's why it's essential to become mindful of how you spend it. So, take a moment today and ask yourself, how can I make the most of my time? How can I stop letting it slip away? Remember, the most valuable resource you have is not your money or your success. It's your time. And once it's gone, it's gone forever. The clock is ticking, and now is the time to truly value every moment. Number two, take care of yourself. First, it's easy to fall into the trap of putting others' needs before our own. We've all been there, helping a friend, meeting the demands of our job, or taking care of our family. But when was the last time you took a step back and asked yourself, am I taking care of me? It's something we don't often think about, right? But the reality is, in order to give the best of ourselves to others, we must first prioritize ourselves. Let's take a moment to reflect on those times when you felt completely drained, physically, mentally, emotionally. You've been running on empty, juggling responsibilities, trying to be everything for everyone, and yet there's nothing left in the tank. We've all experienced this at some point, haven't we? And it doesn't feel good. But here's the thing, if you're constantly giving without replenishing your own energy, you'll eventually burn out. This is where the stoic practice of self-care comes into play, and it's not just about pampering yourself with bubble baths or spa days. It's about a deeper, more meaningful approach to your well-being. Marcus Aurelius, known for his stoic philosophy, firmly believed that self-care was not a selfish act, but a necessary one. He said, Take care not to be deceived. You are not to live for others any more than others are to live for you. This simple yet profound statement shows us that our well-being should never be secondary to anyone else's needs. By taking care of yourself, you're actually better equipped to help others. Whether it's physical health, mental clarity, or emotional strength, you can't pour from an empty cup. But this isn't about indulging in selfishness or ignoring your responsibilities. Instead, it's about finding balance. We live in a world where we're constantly told to be productive, to give, to achieve. But when do we take a pause and recharge? When do we give ourselves permission to rest without feeling guilty? That moment of peace of simply taking care of yourself is not just a luxury, it's a necessity. It's the foundation of long-term happiness, success, and overall well-being. Nostalgically, Think back to a time when you felt the most connected to yourself. Perhaps it was when you were younger and had the freedom to pursue your passions without guilt. Maybe it was during a vacation, when you stepped away from the demands of life and were able to focus solely on what made you feel alive. Those moments were not just about escaping reality. They were a reminder of what it feels like to be in tune with yourself to have the energy to give freely without resentment. But here's the catch. We often forget to reconnect with ourselves in the rush of daily life. We get caught up in the grind, believing that taking time for ourselves is a luxury we can't afford. The truth is, taking care of yourself is an investment in your future. It's a long-term strategy for ensuring that you have the strength and vitality to not just survive, but thrive. So let me ask you, how often do you pause and check in with yourself? How do you nurture your body, mind and spirit? It's not about perfection, it's about taking small, consistent steps towards a healthier, more balanced version of yourself. Self-care isn't just for when you're burned out, it's something you need to incorporate into your daily routine, because only when you're at your best can you give your best. Number three, listen more and speak less. In today's world, it's easy to fall into the trap of feeling like we need to constantly share our opinions, to always be the one speaking. 
Social media in particular makes it feel like everyone's voice needs to be heard. But how often do we take the time to truly listen to others? How often do we silence ourselves and focus entirely on understanding someone else's point of view? This is one of the most overlooked, yet most powerful, stoic strategies that can drastically improve your relationships, career, and even your sense of inner peace. Picture this, you're in a conversation with someone, and instead of listening with the intention of understanding, you're preparing your response, waiting for your turn to speak. It happens all the time, right? We've all been guilty of interrupting, of speaking over others, or simply waiting for our chance to say something. But what happens when we stop talking and truly listen? We open ourselves up to new perspectives, we show others that we value their opinions, and we become better communicators. Marcus Aurelius, in his meditations, wrote, Listen to people, and you will learn. The wisdom here is simple, yet profound. By listening more than we speak, we not only learn more, but we also give others the space to share their thoughts and feelings. It's a practice of humility and respect, one that acknowledges that we don't always have to be the center of attention or the one with all the answers. There's power in silence and in giving others the gift of truly being heard. If we're honest, many of us have been in conversations where we feel unheard or dismissed. It can be frustrating, even painful, when someone doesn't take the time to really listen to what you're saying. We've all had moments where we felt like we were talking to a wall, where our words were met with indifference or distraction. It's a feeling that sticks with us long after the conversation ends. But what if we could change that dynamic? What if instead of waiting for our turn to speak, we shifted the focus to the other person and truly listened? Not just to respond, but to understand, to empathize, to connect. Nostalgically, think back to a time when you had a deep, meaningful conversation with someone, a time when you were completely present, truly listening. Perhaps it was with a close friend, a family member, or even a mentor. There's something deeply fulfilling about those conversations, isn't there? When you listen without the pressure of speaking, the connection becomes stronger, the bond deeper. It's a reminder of the power of silence, the power of truly hearing another person's voice. The curiosity comes in when you realize just how much you can learn by listening. Every conversation, every interaction, holds an opportunity to understand someone else's thoughts, experiences and perspectives. By listening more and speaking less, you unlock a treasure trove of knowledge that you might otherwise miss. Imagine what your relationships, your career or your personal growth could look like if you practiced this strategy daily. Number four, always be yourself. There's a sense of freedom and ease when we simply allow ourselves to be. We've all experienced that moment when we're with a group of friends or in a situation where we feel comfortable enough to be our authentic selves. No pretenses, no forced personalities. It's a relief, right? You feel like you can finally breathe, unburdened by the weight of expectations. But here's the truth, we often don't let ourselves experience that freedom nearly enough. In a world that constantly pushes us to conform, to fit into molds, and to adopt certain personas to be accepted or successful, staying true to ourselves becomes a radical act. It's so easy to slip into the habit of being what others want us to be, of putting on a mask to please those around us. We do this at work, in social circles, and sometimes even in our own families. The need for validation can be overwhelming. But what if, instead of wearing a mask, we simply allowed ourselves to shine as we truly are? The Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius often reflected on the importance of self-authenticity in his meditations. He wrote, Be yourself. Don't be a hypocrite. Be true to what you are. These words carry a timeless truth that resonates deeply. Authenticity isn't just a buzzword or a fleeting concept. It's a way of life, a mindset, 
and a practice that can transform everything from your relationships to your career. When we are authentic, we attract the people, experiences and opportunities that align with who we really are. The opposite is also true when we wear masks, when we pretend to be something we are not. We often find ourselves in situations or with people who don't genuinely resonate with us. The effort to maintain that facade is exhausting and sooner or later, it takes a toll on our mental and emotional well-being. This idea of authenticity is something we can all relate to. Remember those moments in life when you felt like you were pretending to be something you weren't? Perhaps it was at a job you didn't love, or in a friendship where you didn't feel you could truly be yourself. The longer you tried to fit into those situations, the more it felt like you were losing yourself, piece by piece. But when you finally broke free from that, when you let go of pretending, you likely felt an immense sense of relief. That moment, when you could finally just be, was powerful, wasn't it? The nostalgia kicks in when you think about the times when you were most comfortable in your own skin. Maybe it was as a child, before the world taught you to worry about how you were perceived. As kids, we don't hold back. We're not concerned with being cool or impressing anyone. We're just ourselves, that unfiltered, carefree version of you is still there, waiting to be rediscovered. It's easy to look back and long for those simpler times when authenticity came naturally. But here's the fascinating part. When you're truly yourself, the world becomes a much more interesting place. People begin to respect you for your uniqueness, not because you're pretending to be someone else, but because you're showing up as the real you. And that, my friend, is where true power lies. So how do you embrace authenticity in your life? It's all about shedding those layers of self-doubt, fear, and societal expectations. Start by asking yourself, what do you actually enjoy? What do you stand for? What are your values? Number five, let others help you. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that we need to do everything on our own, we live in a society that prizes independence and self-sufficiency, and for good reason. There's a certain pride that comes with handling everything by yourself, right? You feel capable, strong, and in control. But there's another side to this when you refuse help. You also refuse the opportunity to connect, to share, and to grow. The truth is, letting others help you is not a sign of weakness. It's a strength. Imagine this for a moment, you're struggling with something, whether it's a work project, a personal challenge, or just navigating through a rough patch in life. There's a part of you that feels like you should figure it out alone, right? It's that voice telling you, I got this, I don't need anyone. But then, someone offers their support, whether it's advice, a helping hand, or just a listening ear. What happens next? you begin to realize that you don't have to shoulder everything alone. In fact, sharing the burden can lighten your load, ease your mind, and even bring unexpected insights. This is a concept that Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, often reflected on. In his meditations, he urged the reader to recognize the value in collaboration, to acknowledge that everyone plays a part in the larger tapestry of life. He wrote, what is not good for the swarm, neither is good for the bee. In other words, just as bees work together to achieve a common goal, we too must embrace collaboration and mutual support. We don't exist in isolation and we don't have to face our challenges alone. But letting others help isn't just about practical assistance. It's about vulnerability. It's about opening up to the idea that you don't have to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. It's okay to lean on others. This can be especially difficult for those of us who are fiercely independent or proud of our ability to handle it all. There's a certain pride in being the one who always steps up to help others. But when the tables turn, we often hesitate to accept help in return. The nostalgic part of this is remembering a time when we were more willing to receive help. As children, 
We didn't hesitate to ask for help. We trusted that our parents, teachers and friends would be there for us. Over time, as we grew older and more self-reliant, we may have lost that willingness to accept support. But just like when we were kids, it's okay to let others lend a hand when needed. In fact, it's a part of the human experience to give and receive support. So, how can you begin to embrace the idea of letting others help? Start by being open to receiving help in small ways. Whether it's accepting advice from a colleague, letting a friend assist you with a task, or simply confiding in someone you trust, these acts of vulnerability will help you realize that asking for help doesn't diminish your strength, it enhances it. Number six, stay calm and composed. Have you ever been in a situation where everything around you is chaotic and yet there's this strange feeling of peace inside you. It's like the storm is raging on, but you're standing in the eye of it. In moments of crisis, when things feel out of control, being able to remain calm and composed is one of the most valuable skills you can develop. And let's face it, life throws curveballs at us all the time, from personal setbacks to professional challenges. It's easy to get overwhelmed. But it's in those very moments that your ability to stay calm can make all the difference. Picture this, you're facing a stressful situation. Maybe it's a big presentation at work, a difficult conversation with a loved one, or an unexpected emergency. There's a natural urge to panic, to feel the rush of anxiety taking over. But what if you could take a step back, breathe deeply, and respond from a place of clarity and composure. That's where the power of Stoicism comes in. Marcus Aurelius, with his deep wisdom, always emphasized the importance of maintaining equanimity in the face of adversity. He wrote, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This is the essence of Stoic philosophy, recognizing that while we can't control the events that happen to us, we can control how we respond. When we stay calm, we create space for thoughtful action, rather than reacting impulsively out of fear or anger. And in a world that's often chaotic and unpredictable, maintaining that sense of calm is not just a virtue, it's a superpower. The nostalgia comes into play when we remember moments when we were able to keep our composure in stressful situations. Maybe it was during a time of personal loss or a moment when everything seemed to be falling apart, yet somehow you held it together. It's those memories of rising above the storm that remind you of your own inner strength. Staying calm isn't about being emotionless or detached. It's about mastering your emotions so that they don't control you. It's about learning how to navigate through the ups and downs of life with grace and resilience. The next time you find yourself in a stressful situation, remember that you have the power to choose your response. You don't have to react immediately. Take a deep breath, pause, and then act with purpose. Number seven, keep some things private. It's so easy to get caught up in the world of oversharing especially with social media. We post updates about our lives, our achievements, our thoughts, sometimes even before we've fully processed them ourselves. But there's something powerful about keeping certain things private. Not everything needs to be shared with the world, and not every aspect of your life needs to be put on display. In fact, keeping some things to yourself can bring you a sense of peace and clarity that constantly sharing never will. Imagine this, you've just had a personal breakthrough or achieved something meaningful. Your first instinct might be to post it online to get the validation and praise from others. But instead, you decide to keep it to yourself. You savor the moment quietly, knowing that the joy and satisfaction it brings is enough on its own. There's power in that silence. The wisdom of the Stoics can guide us here as well. Epictetus, another Stoic philosopher, advised, don't explain your philosophy, embody it. In other words, don't feel the need to broadcast every detail of your life in order for it to be real. 
Sometimes, the most meaningful moments are the ones that are experienced privately, without the need for external approval or recognition. The nostalgic part comes when we think about times in our lives when privacy was a cherished thing. Before social media and constant connectivity, there was a time when personal moments were just that, personal. We didn't need to share everything and the world wasn't constantly watching. There was a kind of freedom in that. Reclaiming some of that privacy in today's world can be liberating. So what should you keep private? Your personal struggles, your innermost thoughts, and your quiet victories. Not every moment of your life needs to be shared. By holding some things back, you create space for more meaningful, authentic connections and protect your emotional energy from unnecessary outside influences. Number 8. Practice Gratitude There's something magical about gratitude, isn't there? It's easy to focus on what we lack or what's going wrong in our lives, but when we take a moment to appreciate what we have, it shifts our entire perspective. Gratitude has the power to transform our mood, our outlook, and even our relationships. When we practice gratitude regularly, we begin to notice the abundance in our lives rather than focusing on the scarcity. Think back to a time when you felt truly grateful. Maybe it was for a person who showed you kindness when you needed it most, or a moment when you realized how far you've come in life. That feeling of appreciation is powerful, isn't it? Gratitude grounds us, helps us see the beauty in the small things, and reminds us of the good that already exists. The Stoics were keenly aware of the importance of gratitude. Marcus Aurelius frequently reminded himself to be thankful for the opportunities he had even in the midst of hardship. Say to yourself, I have everything I need. What's missing is my recognition of it. This perspective helps us find contentment in the present instead of constantly yearning for what we don't have. The nostalgic aspect comes into play when you reflect on how gratitude was a natural part of your life when you were younger. Think of the moments when you took pleasure in simple joys a warm meal, a day spent with loved ones, or just the beauty of nature. Gratitude doesn't have to be a complex practice. It can be as simple as appreciating the everyday moments that make life meaningful. To incorporate more gratitude into your life, start small. Each day, take a moment to reflect on three things you're thankful for. It can be as simple as a conversation with a friend, the comfort of your home, or the ability to learn and grow each day. By focusing on gratitude, you'll start to see the world in a different light, one that's filled with abundance and possibility. Number 9. Embrace Challenges Imagine standing at the foot of a mountain. The peak seems far away, daunting and unreachable. The path is steep, filled with obstacles, and yet there's something inside you that stirs. You want to climb, you want to take on this challenge. It's this very impulse, the desire to push beyond our limits, that defines us. Challenges, though difficult and sometimes uncomfortable, are the crucibles in which we forge our character. When you embrace challenges, you're stepping into growth. You're telling yourself that you're willing to stretch, to learn, to face the unknown. And isn't that what life is really about? The moments of growth, the moments when we push through adversity, are the ones that leave us feeling the most accomplished. But challenges don't always come in the form of grand epic quests. Sometimes they're the small everyday hurdles, handling a difficult conversation, facing a setback at work, or pushing through a personal obstacle. Each of these moments is an opportunity for growth. Each of these challenges is a step toward becoming a better version of yourself. The nostalgia comes when you think about the challenges you've already overcome in your life. Maybe it was a tough year in school, a difficult time in your career, or a personal challenge that tested your resilience. Remember how you felt when you overcame those obstacles. That feeling of triumph, of knowing you could handle whatever came your way, stays with you. 
curiosity arises when you start to consider the challenges that lie ahead. What will you face in the future? What obstacles are waiting for you? And most importantly, how will you approach them? Will you face them with fear and hesitation? Or will you step forward with the confidence that comes from knowing you have the strength to persevere? Embrace challenges as opportunities to grow, learn and evolve. The more challenges you take on, the more resilient and capable you become. And that, my friend, is where the magic of life lies. If you've made it this far, you're already ahead of the game. Drop a hundred in the comments if you've watched until the end. This shows that you're part of the 0.01% who are committed to making real, lasting changes in your life. Remember, it's not just about consuming knowledge, it's about taking action and applying these principles daily. The journey of self-mastery is challenging, but with the right mindset, there's no limit to what you can achieve. If you're truly serious about transforming your life, make sure to join our community by subscribing to the channel. Stay tuned for more powerful content that will help you build a stronger, more resilient version of yourself. Keep going. Your future self will thank you for it.